Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Now I'm coming to you with a little bit of a different setup. I'm currently on my uh, webcam on my machine, and in just a moment I'm going to be switching over to the screen capture feature where I'm going to be sharing a Wikipedia article with you. And uh, this article is going to detail a crime, a heinous crime, that was perpetuated by the U.S. public health department, the federal government of the United States of America, upon its citizens. And uh, it is, it is uh, uh, disgusting what they did uh, behind the scenes and what they conspired to do uh, to citizens of the United States of America. This took place over a course of 40 years. Now, right now in the midst of the coronavirus, you know, pandemic or plandemic, better yet, we are being told that we should just blindly trust all of the advice that we are given from the U.S. Public Health Department and the officials of it, and that's Anthony Fauci and those alike. And if you express any sort of distrust, any sort of reluctance, uh, suspicion, or hesitance about any of their advice, you know, like their vaccine that they're coming out with, you are treated like you have two heads. You're demonized. They look at you like you are an absolute nutcase. There are even articles from mainstream uh, media outlets that are suggesting an association between uh, sociopaths and those that uh, don't want to wear masks, literally. So the brainwashing is, is going on, you know, hardcore right now. So I want to share this article with you, inform as many people as you can about this. And this is the reason. This is answering the question. You know, why are you so worried? You know, what do you have to be worried about? I mean, it's the U.S. Public Health Department. This is the leading health professionals of the world and of all history. And I'll show you why. I don't want their vaccine and I don't want them anywhere near me. And I don't want their advice. Look with me here on my screen at this Wikipedia article. So... I'm going to be showing you here everything. There's the URL, just in case anyone tries to claim I'm making this up or I'm pulling their leg. Here's the title of the article, U.S. Public Health Service Syphilis Study at Tuskegee. You can duplicate this yourself. So it's U.S. Public Health Service Study. So they're the ones, the federal government did the study on syphilis. That's an STD. And it took place at Tuskegee, particularly, you know, what we know as Tuskegee uh, uh, University. This is in Alabama. Down here, you can follow along with uh, me uh, with my cursor. So I'm going to read this text, and I'll give you just, just you know, basic uh, commentary. So the U.S. Public Health Service syphilis study at Tuskegee was a clinical study conducted between 1932 and 1972. This is 40 years. By the United States Public Health Service. This is by the federal government, a branch of the federal government. Like I said, this is the Anthony Fauci and all of them. The purpose of this study was to observe the natural hist history of, this is important, untreated syphilis. So they wanted to observe syphilis when it went untreated, people that just had it. Now, how did they get people to go along with this? The African-American men in the study were only told... They were receiving free health care from the federal government of the United States. So these men were baited into doing this, into taking part of all this stuff. And all they were told, they didn't know even a study was going on. They were only told that what they were receiving was free health care from the federal government. So they were under the impression that they were just being granted or given from the federal government free health care, free just standard checkups, right? You're just going into the doctor, hey, I'm here for my shot, whatever it is, okay? The United States Public Health Service started the study in 1932 in collaboration with Tuskegee University, the then Tuskegee Institute, a historically black college in Alabama. Investigators enrolled in, in the study a total of 600 impoverished African-American sharecroppers from Macon County, Alabama. So these were black, poor farmers from Macon County, Alabama. And this is what they always do. They always want to use the blacks as their, their guinea pigs because they're a bunch of racists, eugenics, you know, eugenicist racists who believe in evolution. You know, that's why they always launch or deploy their vaccines in stinking Africa. Of these men, 399 had latent syphilis. 
So just sitting in their body, untreated. That's what that means, basically. With a two, with a control group of 201 men. So this is what they compared it to. These were the people that did not have syphilis. So they shot up 399 with them. Think of that. So they took a hypodermic needle. They filled it with syphilis, an STD. And they injected it into the bloodstream of these poor, just innocent African American, these black farmers, just trying to make a living for themselves. They don't have much money. They lied to them and acted like they were they were giving them free health care. And then they shot them up with a highly dangerous STD and then didn't even tell them about it. So the 201 men were not infected. As an incentive for participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care, okay? But were deceived by the PHS who disguised placebos in ineffective methods and diagnostic, diagnostic procedures as treatment. The men who had syphilis were never informed of their diagnosis, so they never told them once that they had syphilis. They never even said, you know, like, hey, you contracted this. Maybe when they came in for a, a checkup, they could have just pretended and acted like you just naturally in your every day-to-day -day life, you know, contracted this. Because they know that, you know, some people, maybe men that, maybe didn't have a spouse, they weren't sexually active. So they couldn't have gotten it. And then also it would have looked, you know, extremely suspicious when three, all 399 of these people that they offered free health care came down, you know, you know, just happened to come down with, coincidentally, syphilis. So of course they couldn't just tell them that and then treat it for them, treat it. So despite the risk of, so they weren't informed despite the risk of infecting others. And the fact that the disease could lead to blindness, deafness, mental illness, heart disease, bone deterioration, collapse of the central nervous system, and death. This is an extremely dangerous disease. These men, I'm sure, went and infected their wives with this disgusting you know, disease, this horribly dangerous disease. Not only that, I'm sure some of these men were lascivious, and I'm sure that they did, you know, sleep around, and they just were spreading this disease like wildfire. Maybe not a lot of them, but at least some of them of the 399, I'm sure, were kind of loose, and they just were spreading this disease around like crazy, and they just, these men just shot these people up with it, these, these poor black men. It's disgusting. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the men were told that they were being treated for bad blood. A colloquial, colloquialism, that's like, that means like a common word or phrase that described various conditions such as syphilis, anemia, and fatigue. Fatigue is just like being tired from bad blood. Specifically, the collection of illnesses, uh, the term included, was a leading cause of death within the Southern African American community. The men were initially told that the study was only going to last six months, but it, ex it was extended to 40 years. After funding for treatment was lost, the study was continued without informing the men that they, were, that they would never be treated. So they went on for 40 years without ever telling them. None of the infected men were treated with penicillin, despite the fact that by 1947, the antibi antibiotic had become the standard treatment for syphilis. So penicillin is a form of an antibiotic. This began in 1932, this study, and by 1947, so what is that, like around you know, 15 years or so, they discovered that this was a, a, a standard or, or somewhat of an effective treatment for this, and they still never administered it to them. It's disgusting. And they went around. I mean, look at these pictures of this. Just, you know, do your own study on this. Look it up. These are some of the pictures, some of the media that we have. These poor guys, man, that they just took these people, these, and these people just lied to them and knowingly injected them with an STD, knowing that they were never going to, 
you know, inform them, you know, of this, or even of their diagnosis, period, that they had it. They never diagnosed them with it. And that they were just they were just watching them. Look at this. It's disgusting. And people want to tell you, oh, I just trust them. They would never do anything to you. You know, nefarious. They would never, they'd never conspire. You're just a conspiracy theory theorist, right? You know, U.S. government, maybe other governments, but our government would never do that. Really? This is just one of many. Really? I'm doing some kind of anatomical study on this guy, too. It's horrible. People are coming in with these... Can you imagine being one of those doctors? Having to, you know, see your patient with all of these different, you know, symptoms and... and, and you know, just pain and anguish that they're going through. And you are privy to this and to their problems and why it's happening. And you have the cure, but instead you just observe how, how syphilis acts and you lie to them. You lie to these people. But yeah, we should, we should just trust you know, everything that Anthony Fauci says. And you're a nutcase if you if you even suggest the the idea, if you even even suggest the idea that, you know, the US government would ever do anything nefarious or, you know, maniacal behind the scenes. People need to wake up. That's what they need. They need a wake up call. That's what they need. You know, the heart of man is is desperately wicked, the Bible says. And who can know it? God bless you and have a good day.